Hello and welcome to another Strategos Battletech tutorial and today we're going to be looking at Arrow 4 homing missiles, a really popular to uh, topic choice. Um, a lot of people asking how do Arrow 4 homing missiles work. So we're going to have a look at how they work in the tabletop game and we're going to be using Megamech um, to show how that works. Megamech is a free piece of software that runs off Java that simulates Battletech. Uh, very very well and so we're going to be looking at this capellan force here I've got three catapult C3s C3 is armed with an arrow 4 homing launcher or an arrow 4 missile launcher and the raven here are armed with a tag target acquisition gear and two cavalry helicopters both armed with target acquisition gear and we've got some targets to shoot at some enemies of the state these four demolisher twin AC20 uh, tanks and we're going to be using those to uh, explain how the Arrow 4 homing system works. Now, we're not going to talk about normal Arrow 4 missiles because normal Arrow 4 missiles and other varieties of Arrow 4 missiles all work as the standard artillery rules like long toms or snipers or thumpers. Um, and so they're a lot easier to understand and use. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking particularly at homing missiles and guiding them in with target acquisition gear. Uh, we're also going to talk about the costs uh, as of current um, version 48.0, the stable version, the way in which Megamech works at the BV cost of uh, Arrow 4 systems and tag is incorrect. Uh, it's been clarified in an errata recently to exactly say how, it correct, how it's corrected. And I'll talk about that at the end. Um, at the moment, it works out far too cheaply in Mega Mech, and so it can be a bit unbalanced. Uh, but I'll talk about exactly how you work it out in a minute. So I've set up my uh, catapult here, and I can just click on them. They're all set to two free pilots to make the shots more likely to hit. And we've set the equipment here as Arrow 4 homing. All of these other types of Arrow 4 munitions here are not homing. So only the homing one has the uh, ability to work with uh, TAG. Um, yeah, the Catapult C3 is pretty good. Uh, it's got five shots of one ton, and it's got for, uh, four medium lasers for getting involved afterwards, but it soon runs out of ammunition. I kind of like the uh, C5, which has got a lot more ammunition, but this is a, a good one for the clan era if you want to go and really make uh, a very bad day for that person who's bought his wonderful uh, Direwolf, uh, you can with this lance. So let's get started with the game. Let's check all the options are in place and we're good to go. So I've set the opponent up to deploy in the north and I'm deploying in the south. And we're going to talk about how the initiative system or the uh, steps are slightly different for Arrow. So I'm going to hide down here behind these buildings with my catapults. I've got simultaneous deployment turned on, so we're both deploying at the same time rather than taking it in turns. And I'm going to put my raven up here just for demo purposes. I'm allowing myself to deploy anywhere. And we've got our cavalries here as well. Cavalry is a good example of a fast attack helicopter with tag. There are plenty of others. This the cavalry is in the uh, um, Capellan Confederation Rat. I think the Sprint's one of the best. It's fast. It has virtually no armament. But there are lots of good tag units and Arrow Four units. So we've entered into the um, main game now, and we have two new uh, phases, which we know from uh, TAC Ops Advanced Rules on page 147. We've got step one, the initiative phase, then step two is the targeting phase. This is where we choose where the arrow fours are going to land. So at the moment, um, I've got it set on double blind, so I can't see where the opponent is. Uh, and my helicopters are too low to actually see. So I'll change that next turn. But we're going to choose to go here with our um, Arrow 4 missiles. 
And it doesn't matter where the hex that you're choosing is, so it does matter, but it's this is the hex that's not, this isn't, isn't the hex that the arrow fours are gonna hit. This is the hex that the arrow fours are going to possibly radiate out from, and I'll explain that in a minute. So I just choose a particular hex. I don't have to be able to see it. I'm gonna fire all of my arrow fours, go for a triple whammy in the same place. I forgot I'd left the option on for the uh, double blind. But that's okay, so as soon as I start moving, we're into the movement phase now, so I'm going to put my helicopters up. I'm going to move my raven up. Oh, I can already see one. There he is. Raven's a bit slow, but it's quite a solid unit for tag. And then the cavalry's are great because they're really fast. So I'm going to just increase my elevation to five. That should be enough to see almost everything. And then let's just zoom, zoom. Now nothing's going to land this turn. I'll explain why in a second after I've just done this next movement. Okay, so my second cavalry is in the air. I can see all of the enemy now. So the, the um, arrow fours aren't gonna land this turn. They've got a flight time, like all artillery pieces. Now the flight time of artillery pieces uh, for one uh, map, which is 17 hexes, is zero. So if you shoot anything within 17 hexes of your unit, then it's going to land on the same turn you fire it. If it's between one and seven map, hexes, map sheets, okay, it's going to take one turn and then it goes on from there. So the arrow four that I launched at the beginning of turn one are not going to land until in turn two. So there's no point tagging anything now, but I can, let's just see if I, I can try tagging things to show you the um, how the guided missile launches work. So you see how this uh, demolisher here has got a movement modifier um, because it has moved a number of hexes. So we uh, can tag this. And when we tag this with our, our target acquisition gear successfully, we can then fire guided munitions at it. And the guided munitions will ignore the movement modifiers of the target unit. So let's have a look. Um, I don't know if I can see with my Raven, let's have a look. Yep, I can see that with the Raven, and I've got a nine to hit. So let's fire the target acquisition gear. And then my cavalry here is it well out of range. My cavalry here, that one's in range as well. They've got a range of uh, five, nine, 15. And again, I've got to choose the target rather than the hex. I'll talk about that in a minute. This tells me which tags have hit now. Okay, so if I've hit with the tags in the tag phase, okay, or what's technically called the indirect artillery uh, phase, then um, I have successfully tagged. Now, once I've successfully tagged something, when I get to the combat phase, I can then use guided munitions against it in the combat phase uh, for for the semi-guided missiles. Now my uh, catapults aren't going to fire. You can fire arrow forwards in the um, in the weapons phase, weapon attack phase, but only uh, when it's a direct fire. So you're directly in line of sight and you are within 17 hexes 
but with a minimum range of six. And we'll try and show you that in a minute. I'm just going to skip through this. So this cavalry is going to fire its guided munitions, and we'll just see what the target numbers are. So normally I would get the plus modifiers because of the movement of the tank. And it says here, plus so two gunnery skill, plus two because I ran, attacker ran, plus one because the target moved three to four hexes. But that's been minus because it's semi-guided ammo. So basically the semi-guided ammo is making it irrelevant how far the target's moved. Plus two for medium range. So still not brilliant, but it does, it's good for very, very fast moving targets, the semi guided missiles. And it misses. Okay. So semi guided missiles are as powerful, I think, as arrow for homing missiles, but they still can be very useful. So into turn two, and this again is the targeting phase, and I'm going to fire another salvo of rounds, and I'm going to choose this hex, and again I'll explain in a minute why I'm choosing particular hexes, choose that one, oh it's gone into the physical phase, that's why I'm, it's trying to ask me if I want to kick the building, which I don't want to kick the building, okay, so now we're in round two and now we're in the indirect fire phase and I'm going to choose this point here to fire my arrows and again I'm going to fire them all together in larger games it's really helpful to have quite a few arrow for and lots of tag units to really get your worth out of them So these missiles here aren't going to arrive until turn three. These ones over here are going to arrive in turn two. So now we're in the movement phase. I want to move my tag units so I can get a really good tag on one of these tanks. I think we'll go for this tank here. And I also don't want to get hit, so I'm going to build up a nice TNM target number modifier. But I'm not going to move the catapults. Should have moved the Raven actually. Here we go. So let's move these cavalry helicopters and try and sweep in for the kill. And one, two, three, four, five. So I want to get within five. I don't want to get too close. Let's do a bit of zigzagging. One common uh, rule that a lot of people get wrong with um, helicopters is they think that helicopters skid. They don't skid, they side slip. This means it doesn't matter how many hexes you move, um, they still roll um, piloting skill, a piloting skill roller base modifier. Whereas with skidding, you get a modifier the more you roll. The more you travel, the distance you travel. So I've got my VTOLs into place. There we go. No side slipping. And now we're into the tag phase, the uh, indirect artillery attack phase. It's not just tag because this is also when those arrow fours that I fired in turn one are going to land. So I want to tag my target and experience has told me that the more tag you can bring to bear in the game the better if you're just bringing one unit with tag then you're really not going to get those consistencies of results but there's a cost to pay for that in bv so we're going to either select the demolisher or the hex now we want to shoot the demolisher you can shoot hexes if you shoot hexes 
then the arrow four will hit that hex. It'll be a minus four to hit it. It will hit that hex, and you will do five points of damage, air of effect damage to everything just in that hex. There's no splash damage to the surrounding hex. That's useful if you're hitting infantry and uh, elementals because they take would take damage to every elemental, for instance. Every elemental would take five damage. Not so good when firing against uh, tanks, but uh, it has its place. But it's not the same as Arrow 4, because Arrow 4 does 20 points of area of effect damage and 10 points to the surrounding hex. So that's very different. A lot of people get confused in that. So Arrow 4 homing missiles, if you aim them at a hex rather than a target using the tag, they do um, five points of air of effect damage just to that hex. So we're going to aim at the Demolisher. Made a seven with the Raven. Again, it gives me the choice every time if I want to do the hex or the, or the uh, target. Okay, so when I click fire here, it's going to actually launch. Uh, it's going to go into the dice rolls to see whether they've hit. Now, this is where this location becomes important. When you launch Arrow 4 missiles, home missiles, you choose the hex that you want them to be around. Now, when they land, the turn they land, so it's turn two, you can hit any tagged unit within eight hexes of this original target hex. So one, two, three, four, I'm five hexes away from that demolisher, so I can hit that. And this is why it's really important to choose where this location is. So you choose a location which you're, you know your opponent's going to be after two movements, because you fire, then they move, then you finish that turn, then you uh, fire another that around, then they move, and then in the next weapon phase, is when it lands so they could have moved twice so it can be quite hard for fast moving targets to predict where this is going to be and also if you're playing against tag it's good to kind of change things up and go and be a bit uh, mobile and move around to avoid people's targets now that number you should write down in secret somewhere every time you fire have like a, an artillery um, table to track that so you can prove to your opponent where you've shot if they ask and then it's within eight hexes, and so it's going to be on a hit. Now, when you've successfully tagged, then the Arrow 4 missiles will strike. They don't hit automatically, but almost. They have to roll, each Arrow 4 missile rolls a four plus roll with no other modifiers. So you just need four or more, nothing else, no target number, no movement. It's a basic four. On a four plus, they hit the target. On a two or a three, they hit the hex the target's in. If they hit the target, they do 20 points of damage to one location, not spread out to one location, like an AC-20. And that um, is determined by the direction from which the arrow four came in. So the facing is going to be to the front, not the direction of the tag. Then, if they miss, then everything in that hex takes five points of damage. So they still are going to do some damage, but maybe not the 20 points of damage. So we're ready to go. Let's fire this off. And there we go. What we've had here is our Raven missed, our cavalry uh, hit. Okay, and then this cavalry missed. And oh, I'm lucky I've walked two cavalries here because this one was useless. He needed a five and he rolled a four. So we've got one tag. And you only need one tag to hit. Now, if you hit with multiple tags, say all three hit, and they were at different targets, the tags. I could choose before rolling for the, before the uh, the arrow fours landed, which one they hit. I don't have to choose when I roll the tag. I can choose after I've rolled the tag to see which units have been tagged before which arrow four homing missiles hit. So here go the arrow four, done 20 points of damage to the front, 20 to the left side, 20 to the front. Okay, it's taken a beating. Still there though, definitely not good. Okay, so we're now into the weapon fire phase. For turn two. Not going to worry about firing weapons on my 
units here. We'll fire some guided missiles in again. There we go. So my guided missiles there have um, have hit once, and again they've ignored the uh, movement modifier. Also, if you're doing indirect fire with guided uh, with semi-guided missiles, you don't get the plus one indirect fire modifier. I think I have to check that, but so you can see my demolisher's already really a bit busted up there. It's actually in force withdrawal. So we're in physical attack phase now because it wants me to kick the buildings. Okay, so we're going into turn three now and we're in the fire phase of turn three. We're going to plant three more arrow fours here. We want to try and predict where the enemy is going to go. We'll do one more example of this, and then we'll show you the direct fire route. Okay, so now we're into the movement phase. Just gonna stay put there with my catapults. My raven's gonna come and do some mischief now. It's not getting within range nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So to skirt the surroundings here. And then the cavalrys. We want the cavalrys to... to swoop in to do a bit more tagging. Good line. There we go. Just want to build up the TNM. I want to be that close. I want to be in short range for those AC 20s. Again, having tag on VTOLs is quite good because they're airborne. It means you can ignore a lot of the terrain issues. Oh, I've got a demolisher right on the front of me. So, let's actually show an example of multiple targets now. So I can actually deliver different tags to different targets. So my Raven is going to have a go at tagging this guy. Uh, who's out of range, I think. Well, there's too many woods in the way. So let's go for this one with the Raven. Needs a 10. It's quite hard to high target him, but these guys should be a lot easier though. Let's have one go for the tank in front of us. And let's have the other one go for the tank that's already been damaged. Not a good tactic. I'd still fire all three at one. So now it's actually saying, select the tag for homing projectile. So basically I've already um, hit and it's asking me to say which target I'm actually gonna hit. Because you roll all the tag and then you choose who they hit. 
So I'm going to choose to have this one hit number one, and this one's going to hit number two, or number four. There we go. Which is this guy over here, the damage guy. Oh, all three of them hit. There we go. So, the Raven uh, missed the Demolisher, uh, the two cavalry hit, so I could choose those two targets, and I could choose which one of those uh, hit. So, that's pretty comprehensive. We've talked about how you use tag and how you use it to target enemies for indirect fire. So, we're in the weapons fire phase. I'm just going to click done to go through that. And then we'll try and have a look at direct fire examples. And one of the interesting things about tag is it doesn't, uh, about arrow four and tag, is it doesn't matter if the unit's firing the tag. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what their skill is to start off with. And it doesn't matter what their um, movement modifier is. Because they're homing, uh, you don't take any modifiers from the fight shooting target, from the shooting uh, unit. Okay, so we're now in a physical phase, so let's get rid of that. And let's move to the uh, movement phase or the targeting phase now. So we're going to send out another wave here. Okay, so we're going to try something really, really tricky. And this is really, really nasty if you can get it to work. This guy here is quite close. And at the moment, I can actually check the range. He is He's at 22 hexes. Now, arrow four would have a flight time of two turns to hit him where he is. But if I aim it so it's so I am not 24 but 17 hexes, which is one board length. So that's 15, 16. So if I aim it here, which is 17 hexes from this target, then what's going to happen is that this arrow 4 is going to land in this turn, while the one I fired in the previous turn had a flight time of 1. So I'll say that again. The first one I fired with the target hex over 17 hexes, and so it took two turns. So turn it fired, and then the turn it lands. This one I fired within 17 hexes, so it's only got a flight time of one turn. I have to make sure each one's got 17 hexes. So I can say, yep, that's range 17. I can fire. And let's see if I can get this one in as well. This is really sweet when it works, and rather nasty. For it to work. This one might not work, so we'll try it. It depends where this demolisher moves during the movement phase. Maybe it'll take the bait and come towards my raven. So I've fired three homing missiles, and all of them have got a flight time of 17 hexes, a surf flight path, so they're only going to take a, uh, zero turns to arrive. So we've got the um, Movement phase now. So again, my, I'm going to move my catapults now out. Again, it doesn't matter that they move. I might just aim at a building to show you the uh, indirect fire. The direct fire, sorry, approach. My raven's going to cause some more mischief here. Try and keep his target number modifier up. Let's move this catapult out this way. And again, it's really important to try and maximize exactly 
how long these cavalries are going to live for because they will get shot down eventually and if you're getting fed up of people doing this against you remember flax a good thing or lbx it gives you a, a minus flat gives you minus two to hit the helicopters and lbx gives you a minus one for the lbx and then a minus two for the flak effect so it can be really effective Okay, so we've done all the movement. We're now into the indirect artillery phase, and this is where we're going to tag. Oh, two of my demolishers have ejected, and their crews have bugged out their vehicles. So I'm going to tag this demolisher here, and again, I'm giving myself as many chances to get success with the tag. Because if all of these tags fail, which has happened, then that's a lot of wasted uh, ammunition for no reason. Now note, this guy is in eight of the Hexit, this one that's going to arrive from last turn. And these three are all arriving from this turn because they have a flight time of zero. So this guy is going to get hit by six arrow fours because of this uh, effect. It's very, very dangerous. So I'm putting three lots of tags, and now I've hit, I can tell I've hit, and I'll see that in the logs in a minute, but I'm just gonna bring the rain. I love the way you can actually see the damage being done as, and there it goes. Okay, so I hit with the tag, and then three of the arrow fours from previous turn hit, and then the three arrow fours from this turn hit. So absolutely devastating. All right, physical attack phase. I'm in two minds if that's a bit of a game breaking thing to do. It's a bit uh, gamey, but it works really well. And it only really occurs on that interface between the zero, between one map sheet or 17 hexes and beyond. Okay. So firing phase, I'm just going to skip the firing phase this turn. We'll just skip the declared physical phase this turn as well. Okay, so we're in now the indirect attack phase, and I'm not going to launch the arrow fours this turn. So I want to see how it works when I use direct fire mode. So I'm going to not have, I'm going to not be on this. So I'm going to click done in the indirect phase. You can't fire indirect and direct in the same turn. Okay, so we're in the movement phase, so I want to get a line of sight on this guy. Don't know if it's going to be possible. Let's try. I'm just going to jump the cap bot across the water. Just run around with the raven a bit. Skidding on concrete. And last guy, I'm just gonna run up here. I'm 
And this cavalry here, we're just going to bring this cavalry a little circle. Now, it's really important to realize that you don't hit from the direction of the tag, so it doesn't matter that your helicopter has got behind the opponent, it's still going to it's still going to take the um, direction from the direction of the firing unit. So even if I took this helicopter right in behind it wouldn't have any effect. I'm not going to go that far behind though because he's likely to turn around and shoot me with that turret. Okay. So now we are in the target acquisition phase. And now I can acquire the target here. So I can say, right, he's right under here. Actually, we'll, we'll skip the target acquisition phase because we're going to fire them directly. So I'm not going to fire my tag. But I'm going to use the direct fire approach. So now I'm in the combat phase. Because I haven't fired my arrow fours, they're now available to fire as direct fire. And luckily this guy is going in. And you can see the range is here. So the range is minimum range of six. And when it says minimum range, it means you can't fire it inside six. So this blocks it completely from firing inside six. Um, and it goes out up to 17. So you've got to be within, within line of sight and in 17. You can fire uh, against targets within 17 hexes if they're outside line of fire but only with the indirect artillery mode. So I'm going to shoot this and this is where where mechs like the Naga would, would fight. They can actually fight face to face using direct fire uh, targets. So I'm going to target and I have to target the hex not the thing. So if I try targeting the demolisher it won't allow me to shoot. It says onboard homing shots must target a tagged unit this turn, but I can actually target the hex with artillery. Okay. Oh, because they're arrow four though, I still need to tag the um, hex. That I forgot. So I need to tag the hex for that to work. So even though the tag, you have to have to have tagged in the previous phase, you can't fire them completely uh, blind. But I think that actually is a rule that they've, is different in the actual tabletop version. Um, if I just check that, it says, um, I'm gonna actually check this because I want to get this right. I'll check that in a minute, see if I can find the exact reference. But I'm sure they can fire even if they're um, even if they are tagged as a direct fire mode, you know, what we call dumb firing mode. But one important thing is any tags that miss complete if there's no tags, if no tags are successful and you've got arrow fours in the air to in, in the air to land, they don't scatter, they just explode in the air. So if arrow fours are due to land and you fluff all your tag rolls and all the tag rolls come up you know missing then all of those arrow fours just explode in the air they don't scatter from that point not like regular artillery do they just explode harmlessly in the air causing no damage to anybody else so i'm just going to 
skip through this. Let's just skip through the fire phase here. Probably going to take some punishment now from this lone tank left. Oh, look at that. Just cored out that Raven in a single AC-20 hit to the right torso. That's why you don't mess with demolishers. And why Innersphere XL engines are fragile. Okay, so we're into the uh, indirect fire phase. And I'm not indirect firing. I'm going to direct fire. So I'm going to click done. So I'm going to move. I don't want to get too close actually because I don't want to get within the minimum firing range. Let's just meander slowly up the up the road because I only need to be within 17 hexes. Let's have our helicopters ready to do some tagging. just walked straight into the middle of all of that fire. So now we're into the tag phase. So I'm going to tag him with everything I've got. So I'm tagging the unit rather than the hex. Hit with the tag, so he's now successfully tagged. So that means during this fire phase, I can hit him with the artillery. And you can see the direct fire is impossible at ranges less than six. So it's not actually like minimum range like LRMs, it's just flat out impossible. So this guy can't fire. Can't fire his arrow four. So let's just whack medium lasers in. And this guy can, he's at range seven. So he's gonna fire directly at the demolisher. Which is different if you are shooting um, non-homing missiles, you wouldn't be able to shoot directly at the, the demolisher, you'd have to shoot at the hex if you're using uh, non-homing missiles. And so we're also firing at the uh, demolisher here, and again the target number is again 4, it isn't based on any movement, Okay, because it's tagged they automatically home in, so there's no movement modifiers at all, because it's a tagged uh, vehicle, it only needs a 4 plus, and if it misses, it still hits the hex and does the area effect damage. So, there we go, we've uh, laid in all of those arrows. They take 10 heat, so they take a lot of heat, these arrows. Let's have some fun, put some medium lasers in there as well, and some. Why not put some alarms? It's a bit close for alarms. If I did that, you could see 
two gunnery skill, plus two attack around, plus one moved, minus one for the semi-guided, plus five for minimum range. So we still need tens to hit, so you can stick do that. There we go. Alright, and so what's happened in this turn is we fired in the uh, weapon fire phase and the catapult has hit with the arrow four. Uh, and also again, you're not rolling to hit with the arrow four as such, you are basically rolling to see whether it uh, strikes the target or strikes the hex. So four plus it strikes the target, two or three it strikes the hex. And so one arrow four hit there, and then the other catapult here, the arrow four hit as well. One to the rear, one to the front. So that's arrow four for you. Okay, we've uh, gone through how to fire them directly, how to fire them indirectly, and the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the cost and how the cost is actually different from that way it's described here and how you work it out. So I'm gonna bring over a little handy spreadsheet. And hopefully this will be big enough for people to read. Um, and what we're going to see is how this works. So I've got my catapult here and I've got the basic uh, BV value of 1360 for a basic catapult. And I'll just zoom in on it so we can make it as big as the screen. And what we do is we first work out the BV of each ton of guided munition. So uh, one ton of Arrow 4 guided munition cost 30, and one ton of LRM 10 guided ammunition, uh, semi-guided missiles cost 18. So we need to add up all of the guided munition uh, BV in our entire force. So we've got a total of 126 BV of guided munitions, okay, in the whole battle force. Now, this is a bit where it gets expensive, we now take that 126, and we need to add that to every unit that has tag for each tag they have. So if they have multiple tags, which is very rare, you'd have to add it twice. Uh, I've never seen this in, in reality, but if you add it to a unit where the tag is firing and rear facing, then it would cost half. Then once you've added the number, you need to multiply it by the skill multiplier. So the skill multiplier for a 2 free pilot is 1.68, uh, which you can see uh, on this table here, which is just straight from uh, the latest errata version of, from the tech manual. So you can see someone who is a 2 free pilot. Uh, gunnery 2, pilot 3 is 1.68. And you have to multiply the cost of the tag and the cost of the unit both by this or you can add the tag to the base cost and then multiply it my spreadsheet is just doing it separately here and so you can see that every single tag in my unit is costing me 212 rounded up bv so that's quite a lot of bv whereas in the old system it would just be 126 in this errated version or clarified version it's uh 600 and 35, uh, or would be more actually if I rounded these. Really, I should round these in my sheet. So this shows that BV is a bit under-costed at the moment in Mega Mac, and that's how you should really work it out. And you've got here the final BV. Now, I've got a pin here for multiplier for C3, but since we're not using C3, this is just one. If you use C3, it costs, I think it's like 30% more, so you can times that, and you can see the final cost of my force is this. And that's a, a good, you know, it's a good amount more than it worked out in Mega Mech. So it's important if you're playing on tabletop and you use Mega Mech to construct your forces, I would use this. I'll try and uh, put a link to the spreadsheet uh, in the notes and you can use that to um, calculate your BV values. So hopefully you've learned how to use Arrow 4 effectively and how to use the homing missile uh, rules and the tank rules. Um, they are a bit more complicated and again the best thing to do again is to read the particular page references which are uh, 
165 to 166 in TAC Ops Advanced Units and Equipment and the Artillery section on page 147 of TAC Ops Advanced Rules. So until next time, this is Stratigos signing out.